On Capitol Hill today, Attorney General William Barr gave more specifics on when the public might see the Mueller report, but little information on what he'll release. Lisa Desjardins was in the hearing room. Barr was scheduled to talk about his agency budget, but Democrats had something to say first. Mr. Attorney General, we cannot hold this hearing without mentioning the elephant in the room. Meaning the I'm fact that Barr, to... one of the few people to have read the completed the Mueller report, is the person the in charge of its release. He gave lawmakers uh, more of an indication of when. Within a week, uh, I will be in a position to release the report to the public, and then I will uh, engage with the chairman of both judiciary committees about that report and about any further requests that they have. But he stopped short of giving Democrats, like appropriations chairwoman Nita Lowy, what they wanted. Will we have the complete report? You mean the unredacted report? Mm hmm No. Barr said he is working on redactions based on what the law requires, and he does not believe Congress has a right to see redacted grand jury testimony. I don't intend this, at this stage to send the full unredacted report to the committee. I am relying on my own discretion. Uh, to make as much public as I can. Democrats repeatedly questioned where Barr's loyalties lie, if he's aiming to help the president. Lowy raised that it took the attorney general only two days to write a summary of the report's conclusions. All we have is your four-page summary, which seems to cherry-pick from the report to draw the most favorable conclusion possible for the president. And in many ways, your letter raises more question than it answers. Barr said he was helped by Mueller giving advance notice of the report's direction. In his summary, Barr quoted Mueller as concluding there was no evidence that the president's campaign coordinated with Russia, and on obstruction of justice, that Mueller could not conclude whether the president committed a crime. Barr told lawmakers the White House provided no input on his letter, though it did get a heads up. I think it may have been read to them. They did not get to see the letter. Republicans pushed back themselves at Democrats, accusing them of having a political agenda. Robert Adderholt of Alabama. Unfortunately, I, I see so many of the questions here this morning have gone toward, uh, going toward a uh, grassy no conspiracy theory uh, regarding uh, uh, with the Mueller report. In the end, subcommittee chair Jose Serrano closed the hearing with a broad message to Barr. I hope that if you take something from here today, since we took a lot from you and information, is to maybe look around and realize or pay more attention to the fact that we lean on you to come through for this country. After the hearing, the politics returned, with each party arguing their support or suspicion of Barr to cameras. But all acknowledged the real fight is still ahead when he releases the Mueller report and how much they see. And Lisa joins me now. So, Lisa, we see this division in the committee, the disagreement. You've been talking to them, though, as well, behind the scenes. They're anticipating the release in the next few days. What are they saying about what they're looking for, how they're going to handle it? Yeah, to some degree, this hearing today was just optics. We really didn't learn a lot, except that now we know the timeline is within the next week. But what's happening behind the scenes is, of course, Democrats have a big decision to make. Jerry Nadler, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, holds in his hands subpoenas that could ask for, legally ask for, this full report. My indications are from sources are that he is going to wait until whatever Mueller releases comes out and then decide what he does with those subpoenas. Where that takes us then, Judy, of course, is to a very tricky court battle. Democrats say that they would like to see this redacted information behind the closed, behind closed doors in what they call skiffs. Those are classified areas where they can look at this kind of information. But the indication today from Barr was that he is not inclined to release this information at all. So I think we, we are on a collision course ultimately over that information. First, however, we're waiting to see what the public and the rest of us get to see in this report, which is coming up within days. Within days. It sure does look like a collision, though, That's right. is, is what's ahead. So another issue, these changes in leadership at the Department of Homeland Security. The secretary is now gone mm -hmm. or leaving on her way out, Kirsten Nielsen. It's not necessarily getting positive reaction from all Republicans, and I want to ask you about that. Um, there's speculation about others uh, at the department. The 
U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Director, a man named Lee Cisna. What are you hearing from Republicans about all this? We saw some really remarkable reaction from some senior Republicans who otherwise have tried to support the Trump administration. Let's look at this quote from Chuck Grassley, the senator from Iowa, who until recently was the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. He spoke the, in an interview, uh, I believe, to the Washington Post. He said, the president has to have some stability. He's pulling the rug out from the very people that are trying to help him accomplish his goal. Chuck Grassley is talking not just about the change in Homeland Security, but all these other acting departments that I know you talked to Amna and to Yamish about yesterday. And the one you mentioned right now, the USCIS, um, is important as well because that's something that Republicans want to use. That's an office they want to use in the future for trying to deal with asylum policy. Grassley's not the only one. I also talked to Ron Johnson, the chairman of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, Republican. Same thing, concerns. And one more really important name, Chairman of Armed Services James Inhofe. He told me this is a huge problem now because also open is, of course, the seat at the Pentagon. The Defense Secretary nominee is acting. Inhofe told me because of this, he thinks that there will be news on that nomination this week. It puts pressure to put someone in the Pentagon because there's no one at Homeland Security. It's a it's a glaring situation to have this these significant vacancies right now. And just quickly, yeah. uh, as well, Lisa, you're learning about some early efforts right. on the part of members of Congress to deal with the situation at the border. That's right. Ron Johnson, the Homeland Security Chairman, told me he's working on legislation from a Republican point of view to try and change how the asylum system works. We'll be covering that in future weeks. But, Judy, it's important to note this comes, as we saw new numbers today, about detentions at the border. Apprehensions last month, Judy, went up to 103,000 people. That is an all-time record for March. And I think that number is expected to continue to grow. Meanwhile, Judy, Congress is expected to take a two-week recess in the midst of all of this. So a solution does not seem like it's coming soon. I'm sorry to report. Well, we thank you for staying on top of it, and I know you, you are going to continue to. Lisa Desjardins, thank you. You're welcome.